Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the idea of extraterrestrial intelligence and the possibility of such intelligence existing somewhere out there in our galaxy. And all of this is going to be based on another study I discovered recently that as always you can find in the description below. But also before I start, I really wanted to talk about this. You probably know by now that I'm not the one to usually do any kind of a promotion, but in this case I wanted to make an exception. This absolutely wonderful science fiction novel by my friend Peter Codron from Brisbane, Australia captures the essence of what we're going to be talking about today really well. And it's actually based on hypothetical questions that were asked by several astrophysicists and several science fiction writers a few years ago. This actually all started on Twitter, as always, most of these things usually start on Twitter. And a lot of these questions were in regards to the famous Oumuamua trying to essentially figure out if this was indeed some sort of an extraterrestrial probe or some sort of an extraterrestrial vessel, or if it was just a comet as a lot of scientists believed. And so without spoiling too much, Wherever Seeds May Fly explores this idea really well and to the extent that I've never actually seen anyone do before. The book already has some stellar reviews and it's actually super super fun. Anyway, so what exactly are we actually talking about today? And how does this all relate to Oumuamua and extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, a few months ago, this interesting paper came out that essentially used statistical analysis to estimate the amount of potential civilizations out there in the galaxy, but did so using several major assumptions. The biggest assumption actually being something that might help us resolve the famous Fermi paradox. You know that paradox that started by this person right here, Enrico Fermi, who was one of the scientists working on the Manhattan Project which resulted in the creation of a nuclear bomb. I remember reading the story and basically the scientists working on the project once in a while had these philosophical discussions. And one day Fermi looked up into the skies, pointed up and said, so where is everyone? That question has still not been answered. We still don't really understand why we're not actually seeing any other extraterrestrial civilization trying to communicate with us, trying to travel across different stars and essentially having battles in outer space. Where is everybody indeed? And to try to come up with an answer for this non-existence of alien intelligence in outer space, at least us not seeing anything, the authors here take a very important assumption. All civilizations have a tendency to eventually self-destruct or self-annihilate. And whether it's because of some sort of a dramatic climatic change, because of some sort of a dramatic cataclysmical event that destroys the planet, or because the civilization reaches the point where it basically destroys itself maybe because of the advances in technology, maybe because of some sort of a crazy AI, for some unknown reason. In other words, the main premise here is that all civilizations end the same. They end. We just don't really know when and how long it takes. And based on this premise of self-annihilation, the scientists then try to calculate how many possibilities we have for having civilizations out there right now, when the best time was for civilizations to exist in the galaxy, and also where exactly we would be most likely to find more civilizations and thus possibly hear their communications as well. And some of the assumptions that had to be made in this study include of course the idea of the prevalence of Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars, in this case G-type stars, the prevalence of some really cataclysmic and potentially deadly events such as supernova happening nearby, the probability and also the time required for civilization to develop just enough to be able to produce radio emissions and communication, but also there had to be a numerical value for the tendency of all civilizations to eventually destroy themselves even if the conditions are absolutely perfect. And so this is kind of similar to the concept we have here on the planet in regards to empires. All empires eventually fall. And because of all of these assumptions, this is still a very hypothetical approach. And so assuming that life does indeed arise on various Earth-like planets around G-type stars, and also eventually does have a tendency to become somewhat intelligent and possibly even start communicating, this paper establishes very interesting parameters for when and where civilizations most likely existed the most in our galaxy. Roughly summarized in this image from the paper you can find in the description. According to the scientists, the most likely place to find the most civilizations even right now is actually somewhere in between planet Earth or between the solar system and the center of the galaxy. What you're seeing being pointed at, that's basically the solar system. It's about 25,000 light years away from the center. 
somewhere in the middle, right around the point of about 13,000 light years away from the center, that region right there has the highest probability of having the most Earth-like planets with G-type stars according to these scientists. But possibly not currently. The scientists believe that this was very likely the case about 5 billion years ago. In other words, 8 billion years after the creation of the universe, or possibly about a few hundred million years before Earth and the Sun were created, that's when that particular region in between Earth and the center had the highest number of galactic civilizations capable of interstellar communication and possibly even knew of each other's existence. But with the universe now being 5 billion years older, and with us being on the outskirts of the galaxy, that's when the chance of finding another civilization becomes much, much lower. According to the scientists here, we're basically like a frontier civilization, and we also sort of arrived to the party kind of late. In other words, a lot of civilizations that might have existed have long perished, with the highest number still being clustered around the same area around 13,000 light years away from the center, or about 12,000 light years away toward the center, toward this region you see right here in this beautiful time lapse. But because this is a relatively far distance, it's about 12,000 light years away from us, it will be almost impossible for either one of the civilizations to know we exist or for us to know they still exist. And also, if they do exist, they're probably just really young or might not even exist yet. So in other words, even though the chance for their existence is higher in the middle of the galaxy, some of them might not have advanced enough to be able to communicate. But I guess another important implication from all of this is the fact that as the universe ages and as stars become older and older, the chance for an advanced civilization to become self-aware and to start to communicate or to basically even reach the point where we are is going to become even less and less prominent. So with time, with billions of years, there's going to be even less civilizations and even fewer possibilities for an advanced civilization to exist somewhere in the galaxy. With all eventually reaching the point where either something happens to their planet or they self-annihilate. And even if we make an assumption that Star Trek was correct and eventually humans will reach a point where we're basically just nice to each other and everything just works well and we get to travel across the universe, or in other words, if the chance for self-destruction is extremely, extremely low, statistically speaking, from this paper, it still means that the majority of galactic civilizations have long perished for one reason or another. It's just been too long, 5 billion years. And any civilization that's still in existence today is probably still too young to do anything important or to be able to reach other stars or communicate with other species. And so essentially, the Fermi paradox here is answered with the idea that any civilization that still exists out there is just too young. It's not able to do anything that we expect an advanced civilization to do. And any Star Trek-like species able to travel across the universe has long perished for one reason or another. Another interesting discovery out of this paper suggests that the number of civilizations is currently still increasing, but in about 6 billion years or about 20 billion years after the creation of the universe, we're going to reach a kind of a balance where suddenly we're going to start having less civilizations forming and thus less opportunities for other civilizations to meet each other. And after this period, more civilizations are going to start dying out, suggesting that the chance for first contact is going to decrease even more. But here, it's also important to understand that the study is based on a lot of different assumptions. So obviously, take this with a grain of salt. First of all, the assumption here was that the civilizations like ours, or really for this matter, any reasonable galactic civilizations, can only form on Earth-like planets around G-type stars. For example, one of the assumptions was that about 11% of Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars will receive enough radiation to form liquid water and to thus allow life to exist. But one of the previous studies I discussed on the channel does mention that one of the reasons we have life on Earth is actually purely due to luck. And the video for this is somewhere right there. Anyway, so that's one assumption, but there are so many others. Like, for example, one of the events that they consider to be a sterilizing event are supernova. But today we know that so many other events might have happened in our galaxy where they could have been sterilizing as well. One good example especially of potential civilizations close to the center of the galaxy are the super powerful events coming from the central black hole that created the Fermi bubbles. Whatever this was, it was so powerful that it might have sterilized a lot of galactic civilizations living in the area a few billion years ago. And so even though in this study the implication is that where we're located is actually kind of rare for galactic civilizations, 
A lot of other similar studies, especially ones touching on the idea of a lot of really powerful events happening near the center of the galaxy, imply quite the opposite. They imply that we got lucky by being so far from the center. And so in that sense, it's important to see this particular study as a kind of a best case scenario. A lot of things could have gone wrong for many different civilizations if they existed, which also implies that Earth, and by extension the humanity itself, might have got super lucky being where we are today. And also, according to the scientists in the paper, in the best case scenario, the oldest civilization in the galaxy right now is about 500 million years old. But that's if nothing bad ever happened in the galaxy to that particular civilization. Now, this of course would imply that that particular civilization would have a chance to, for example, launch something like a stellar sail or some kind of a probe to try to explore other parts of the galaxy, and maybe, just maybe, the mysterious Oumuamua might have been one of these probes. But on the other hand, depending on how long the object traveled across the galaxy, the implications from this paper suggest that the original civilization is probably long gone. With the main conclusion in the paper being the fact that if civilizations exist out there, they're probably just as young as ours. They're probably super curious about the life outside of their own planet, they're probably also curious to find other civilizations, but at the same time, they also have a propensity for self-destruction, kind of like humans. And so in that sense, maybe we'll hear from them one day, but chances are, at least according to this paper, based on our location, based on the age of the universe, we might actually never hear from anyone ever. And so for all we know, maybe all civilizations end up sending these extraterrestrial probes and then sort of self-annihilating for one reason or another. But just like in a lot of science fiction books, it doesn't mean that all civilizations are going to end up the same. Maybe just maybe, at least one civilization out there is going to break the cycle. On that note, check out the book, it's pretty awesome, and well, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in the video. I actually haven't finished this yet, so I'm going to go and do this right now. And in the meanwhile, check out all of the papers and all of the relevant links in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by buying the wonderful person t-shirt or by joining the channel memberships. I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye. And I kind of hope we don't self-annihilate anytime soon, because there are so many wonderful things for us to explore in the universe, and so many different seeds for us to find from other civilizations.